In this episode of Hot Hot Wars Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to be punking cybers. We're going to have many core upgrades with Ryzen 5000. That's going to be fun. We're going to have fan edition galaxies and multiple, I say multiple giveaways. Next. Welcome back to yet another episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks. We're up here in the Northeast, most all of us, actually, not just most of us, all of us. And uh, it's in the low 20s, and we're going to get a foot of snow. How you guys <laughs> doing? My snow just started. It just started coming down a few minutes ago, and it's like a brisk 21 degrees. So, you know, been better. Getting a freaking Northeaster. As they say up here in these parts, it's ridiculous. Nor Norista, Chris, are you getting a Norista up and up in there where you can't get there from here? So way, yeah, way way up here in the north northeast, uh, we're actually only getting a few inches, so we're missing most of it. I think it's centered over Pennsylvania, so not too bad. Yeah, we're 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 projected to get eight to twelve inches of the white stuff. Another three to five. That's overnight. Another three to five tomorrow. Okay, Marco. <laughs> the white <laughs> eight to twelve inches. <laughs> You're bad. You're bad. <laughs> I can't say nothing without this guy's head going in the gutter. It's crazy. I'm talking <laughs> snow, you freaking pervert. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's coming. Yeah. So yeah, we get. I mean, just winter wonderland is gonna swoop in. Well, you know, most likely have a white Christmas unless we have a thaw before then. But uh, winter's here, and uh, I'm not ready for it. You know, snowblower in the garage, all that stuff. But still, like, so done with being frozen all the time. <laughs> I, I hate. I hate the winter. Like, I, I, if I didn't have so much family up here, I would totally be out of the Northeast. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon from our team lives in North Carolina, and that's kind of about perfect. Doesn't get stupid hot too many months out of the year and just like beautiful most of the time. Yeah, I have, one of my brothers bought a big piece of property in North Carolina. We already have friends there. If if we get out of the Northeast, that's probably where we'll end up to. Chris, are you are you a, a mainlander for life? Um, you came from California, you poor yeah. some bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did come from California. Um, here in Maine for now. Who knows where we'll end up as as the years go by. Um, our neighbor actually did move. Well, the neighbor we had last year moved from here in Maine to North Carolina. So uh, there is there is a lot moving in that direction apparently. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, you get I get roots here. I don't think I'm ever leaving, but um, sure does get old. You know. The colder I get and the snowier it gets when I'm thumping <laughs> out in the driveway to try and clear a path. But we'll stop whining because we have to count our blessings. That's what we have to do. We have lots to be thankful for post Thanksgiving because, man, we're still swimming in the good stuff. Um, I, I spent a little quality time with some great technology from the folks at AMD, which we'll be talking about next. Marco, what are you working on right now? A little, uh, little GP? I have. Back? Yeah, I have. Well, I have the MSI Supreme um, RTX 3080. I'm done testing. I have my graphs assembled. My pictures are done and edited. So should be in layout tomorrow for that. And I would love to pull it off before the end of the week. Um, and then I have some stragglers that I've honestly been sitting on too long. But, you know, that just means I'll have more detail in the articles. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris, what are you Sophie's working? laughing at me. Sophie's, <laughs> Sophie knows you're just slinging the BS. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, what are you working on? Anything exciting? Um, should have uh, a, a little something uh, coming up. I, I don't know if we're making that announcement yet. Um, I, I think it just <laughs> arrived, but there will there'll be something. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. Fair enough. I'm I'm not aware of what that is you're speaking of, but we we often speak in tongues around here because there's things under NDA. There's there's things non-committed and committed. And well, anyways, we'll uh, we'll talk some more. But yeah, let's uh, let's talk about um, Cyberpunk uh, 2020 2077 coverage. Boy, that that is a title that has been bubbling. Uh, probably one of the biggest game launches, you know, post-launch engagement 
I guess, you know, engagement coefficient, if that's a, a number we measure. Um, probably the biggest launch I've, I can recall in a very long time. Uh, interesting game uh, full of bleeding edge rendering technology as well as uh, big movie stars like Keanu Reeves playing the main, ca- main character there. Um, ambitious title, I will say, as well. Um, been a long time coming. Bugs, yeah, we expected a few, and there are some, there are some showstoppers. If you're on a PS4, ha, PC Master Race, sorry about that, um, <laughs> because uh, that's the folks, folks on PlayStation, some PlayStation platforms are not happy with the performance. Uh, they've got some issues there that that need to be patched. But on the whole, people have been pretty much enjoying this game. I spent an hour, hour and a half with it just to kind of get a feel for the environment, went through the training, you know, the noob training in the beginning, <laughs> just because, you know, I probably needed it. And uh, it was, it, it's interesting. It, it's, there's a lot of eye candy, sometimes a little too much, um, you know, creating atmosphere in my opinion. Um, but it's an interesting game. It is definitely a cerebral, heavy storyline not as much run and gun, more tactical kind of shooter. Um, first person, of course, but uh, it is not a mindless, you know, uh, guilty pleasure like Marco enjoys, Left for Dead, just running and gun and killing zombies. This is this takes some thinking and some puzzle solving and all that good stuff. Um, impressions, Marco, have you peeked under the hood? Ben Funk did quite a nice job for with for us on a performance preview and a performance review as well. But uh, what, what are your thoughts that you've dabbled around with that title? Yeah, I mess around a little bit and, and I did been through all of our coverage. And I think what, what strikes me the most about the game, it, it seems like they put a ton of effort into visuals and creating like a really massive open world type of setup. It, it is a, a really, you know, a really ambitious title and perhaps didn't pay as much attention to the minutia. Like some of the bugs um, that we saw where like you could randomly just be walking and, you know, you, you look down the street to see if somebody's coming, there's nothing there. You step into the street and you get, you know, whacked by a car or, you know, it's just stuff just pops in randomly. And in, in Ben's article, he had something really funny in there. there. There's like a path in front of one of the buildings that's blocked off um, with like pylons. And the path is so thin that every car that goes by crashes into the pylons and starts yelling at you, you know, as the character. <laughs> so if you're looking through the menus, though, like the game is gorgeous. Um, it's it's put together really well in terms of the graphics and the audio and the voiceovers and the acting. It, like you, it's not cringeworthy like some games. They did a really fantastic job in that regard. And if you look at the menus, there's like tons of customizations for the graphics and the settings, but like the character creator is kind of limited, even though you can give yourself like, you know, a giant, uh, you know what I'm saying? Hoo-ha. And that, yeah. <laughs> so, but like the character creator is limited and this, the bugs, some of them are, are kind of crazy. Like th- that information that came, uh, that came about, about not taking advantage of SMT on AMD processors properly. Like that just seems like such a silly thing that the community had to find that and fix that, you know, right. like that, w- that's kind of nuts. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and that's an interesting, um, that's an interesting topic you bring up. There is a, a low AMD performance bug that literally, if you just disable the processor detection mechanism in the game, um, it will, it will open up better symmetric, uh, multi-threading on AMD processors. Intel processors are not effective. Uh, I think this was an old, 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 development um hook that was coded into the game so that um you know older amd platforms were limited in terms of how much threading that was utilized to optimize performance on much older you know pre-rise and platforms and uh and if you just disable that by tweaking a couple of digit hex in the exe of the game a, um, you know, break essentially breaking that check, that CPU check, it it results in. Oh, I observed it myself. Much better thread utilization, 
um, you know, load balancing across all the threads of your, your Ryzen processor and, you know, anywhere from like a five to, you know, 10, 12 percent um, performance uplift, depending on uh, how GPU limited you are. If you're if you're thoroughly GPU limited in ultra high settings and your GPU is cranking away, you're not going to see much of a change. But in other settings where, you know, you, you might see another 10 percent gain in frame rate. So it's an interesting like total mulligan, like who, right? Like why, why did you miss this one? This is easy, easy stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, it, it was just such a, a silly thing to, to miss. Didn't, didn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, but in, in terms of, of the game though, it's already so successful. I think I read that they recouped all of the development costs with pre-sales alone and yeah. even though, you know, th there were bugs, uh, it was had already been delayed and there were still bugs at launch and the massive 1.04 patch came relatively quickly. Still an awesome game. Like ben, if you come by and check out uh, Ben's piece, um, he did a great job reviewing the game and, and not giving too many spoilers, but also has a bunch of performance data. So you can see how the various levels of DLSS and ray tracing affect the game. And there's a few tests with just standard rasterization too. So you can see what frame rates are like. But, you know, what he found is the the, the frame rates are, are relatively smooth and even, so there's not tons of major swings. It's just such a demanding title that performance isn't super smooth um, if you're cranking things up. Now, DLS2, uh, DLSS 2.0 does help on the NVIDIA cards. No ray tracing on AMD yet. That's coming later um, in a patch. But, yeah, like, it seems like a really awesome title. Just, you know, it's got such a microscope on it that, it was going to have some negative press and the bugs didn't help, you know, you know, it's, it's interesting that the, the negative press th that is out there on it and, and how quickly stuff spreads now, like gamers just get, are, it's so the, the, the platform, you know, on social media for, for vocal gamers is so impactful um that yeah man i mean it, it's it's good i mean sometimes you get a fair amount of vitriol with it too and it's like you know find a place to channel your energy more positively sometimes you do you do feel that way but it also i mean it's direct feedback to impact things for the better as well which is great and i think that that'll uh that'll probably be the case with this it seems like cd project red is pretty pretty on the spot trying to get some stuff fixed up um and interesting point about DLSS 2.0, you flip that on in this game engine and it is a, it is a kind of a poster child game in endorsement of that technology. I think you gain some significant frame rate advantage. The visual quality is excellent with DLSS 2.0 on, um, wow. re really just a, uh, just a, a, a great example of, Hey, you know, free performance in the can. Uh, don't don't visual quality does not suffer. In fact, in certain areas, it's improved. Um, it's it's actually a, a pretty good showcase for for DLSS. Um, and, you know, first version of DLSS it had some certainly some some uh, caveats with it. 2.0, especially with this title, with ray tracing flipped on all the eye candy turned up really looks great. I tested it with a, a 3080 that way. Yeah, I think it depends on what level that you use. I'm trying to find the section where, where Ben was talking about that. I uh, think he's saying if you're above a higher quality version, better than the ultra performance, it looks good. But once you go to the lower levels, it's upscaling so much that some data is lost and like you can't recover it with um, with the AI yeah. and the scaling. So yeah. if you have, you know, like a, a 3070, um, is a, is a great card. A 3080 is obviously going to be an even better card for this kind of game, but you'd be pushing it using the highest quality levels with like a, a 2080 or 2060. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. Medium ray tracing preset. Let's see. Balanced DLSS 1080p ultra medium ray tracing preset. Balanced DLSS. A 2080 super is averaging something like 65 frames per second that's 1080p if you want to game 1440p you're gonna you're gonna um let's see let's look at that 1440p the 2080 supers oh it's still down if it's 55 on balanced dlss so i think i think i think the 
the performance DLSS was where you saw some visual impact, right? Yeah, I, th I think it was the, the ultra performance. As long as you're unbalanced or higher, it still looks good. And you can still get good performance. And even if you're you're kind of pushing it in, in, in terms of frame rate, at least the game remains smooth. There's not a ton of huge spikes. You know, if the, in one of the um, the frame time graphs that we have up, there was literally only one frame through the run that exceeded 35 milliseconds. So it's a smooth running game, just a, a demanding game that needs the horsepower to get the frame rate high. Yeah, you look you look at that 1440p ultra high preset with uh, with medium ray tracing flipped on the um, the 2080 super is 55 frames per second, almost 56 on average. But then you look at the 99th percentile low, and it dips down to 47, and then 50 at the 95th percentile low. So not a whole lot of variation there, which is good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Cool game. Interesting. Um, interesting uh i guess to to see keanu reeves in it love love the idea of bringing hollywood movie stars sort of in the real um <laughs> playing a character right um people criticized him for being a little too um monotone a little too uh stiff i think was the word i heard and i'm sorry but that's kind of Keanu's gig. That's what he does. Is that That's sort of what the character should have been doing too? But like you know, he's just aloof about everything, you know. So whatever. Yeah. That's how that's how Keanu played it. He's cap <laughs> He's Captain Cool. I agree. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like Neo once he re realizes how to manipulate the Matrix. He's like super cool. Got to get the shades on, and he ain't, he ain't cracking that skin at all. Chris, what do you what do you what do you think about the whole thing? Do you have any thoughts? Did you did you check it out yet? So I, I haven't played it in person. I've I've seen a couple of playthroughs. It obviously looks gorgeous. I think it's the most populated looking open world game I've seen in terms of just the sheer number of NPCs walking around, yeah. even if they are appearing out of nowhere and running you over at times. Um, I just I think <laughs> it helps build that immersion that convinces you that this is a lived in city with real experiences going on. Um, Maybe it's realistic that you walk around a corner and there's a shootout. Maybe it's not, but you know, it's it's part of the city's flair. Um, the performance we're seeing with it, I think, is expected for the level of detail in each of the frames, and especially with the ray tracing on and how far they're pushing it. I'm not surprised to see, you know, cutting edge hardware pushing, you know, struggling to hit 60 FPS, um, at, especially at the higher resolutions, but. This is a game that I think is going to have so much content in it that people are going to be playing it for years, like we saw with Skyrim, that people are still playing. Um, so, you know, at, even as hardware continues to develop, they'll still be coming back to Cyberpunk 2077 and playing it and reliving the experiences as they get those hardware upgrades and get a, get more immersed in the game. So I, I think that it's got a good future ahead of it as well. Yeah, I think you could see some interesting DLC come with this game as well. I think you could see some new new city maps, new areas, new challenges, what have you. I, I think I think they can they have something to, to build on here. A couple of comments and uh, Mark, I don't know if you want to address one of them that's interesting completely off topic, but um mm -hmm. uh yeah, Cyber uh, Tech Tectonic uh, says Cyberpunk is insanely great game once they get the bugs worked out and fixed. Um and there's some pretty interesting um, uh, bugs, uh, spoiler, not spoilers, uh, what am I thinking of? Anyways, you know, bug happenings that uh, cause some comic relief. Um, so um, bloopers, bloopers, that was the word I was looking for. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't find bloopers in my head. Yeah, bug bloopers um, going around, memes that'll be going around. So good stuff to watch for there. Um, uh, and uh, good stuff, I think, moving forward for this title. Do we want to? Do you want to address the uh, the the comment on uh, Nvidia's um, press tactics, or keep moving? Um, we um, we can quickly yeah, address it. I quickly. think I yeah. think there's really if you watched um, if you watched Linus's rant or you watched um, you know Jay's two cents um, chime in on this. A bunch of folks already chimed in on this as well. If if, if you're watching and you're unaware what happened, uh, NVIDIA had apparently cut off hardware unboxed from receiving Founders Edition cards uh, due to differences in um, of opinion in the way hardware unboxed was doing testing. They have rolled that back. There was lots of backlash. I, you know, we've been around for so long 
I mean, I can, I'll honestly say the only company I ever got into a screaming match with somebody was with somebody from NVIDIA. But that was, oh my gosh, how many years ago? Like when AMD first introduced Crossfire with the X850s. That's how <laughs> long ago that conversation was. Yeah. But to be perfectly honest, since then, and I'm not blowing smoke, zero issues. Like it seemed a little out of, out of character for for uh, BDR to go at somebody the way he did in that particular email. So maybe there's some backstory we're unaware of. Um, regardless, that's not really the issue. But, you know, business is tough. Stuff happens. I think anything that needed to be said, Linus, uh, kind of that epic rant he went on, you know, you have to like that guy, man. I, I know, like, I want to be jealous and hate him, but Linus just does a freaking good job. <laughs> so. no, you don't. You don't want to be jealous and hate him. It, it, no, he, he, <laughs> Linus does do a good job. He's he's a smart, smart guy for sure. And uh, a lot of the folks that, that weighed in on this in our community make some very good points. I mean, uh, I don't think uh, anybody in, in our line of work, press side, would agree, would, would disagree with maintaining editorial integrity in the press. And that's really what the foundation is of, of that whole dust up. Uh, editorial integrity is is key. And when a manufacturer tries to influence that in any way, that's not a good thing. And <clears throat> I think you hit the nail on the head about, con about the context. There may have been some context involved prior to that email. The, the email that went around is, you know, and the things that were said are certainly inexcusable, you know, but I mean, at the end of the day, you have people in this business and that's what you learn after decades. And I hate to admit that Marco, uh, <laughs> how long we've been doing this. That's what you learn is that people have communication issues. People have different ways of trying to influence and leverage it's people man and sometimes you know things are said and and um you know stuff happens that isn't in the best light doesn't doesn't look well doesn't look good bad look um and and you you move on not 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 everybody's perfect um I, you know i'm not trying to make excuses for anybody totally see it um totally stand behind uh, maintaining editorial integrity in the press and, or I should say independence, um, you know, not shaping, not being allowed to shape the narrative. That's key. But yeah, we, we, we don't want yeah. to stay on this too long because, uh, you know, it's all been said a hundred times before by other folks as well. And interesting stuff, never a dull moment. <laughs> And like in terms of our perspective, we we've had such a you know we've been online so long and I've been doing this so long, yeah you know we'll get a phone call from a company we're working with and you know we've had such a long relationship they'll say you know what the f was that what are you doing and then we'll have a conversation you know so I, I, the lines of communication I think because we're you know so OG in the business you know the the communication's a little different. OG. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I want to be OG instead of old. Can I be OG, please? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, good, good. All um, right, well, let's let's move on. Let's move on to some fun stuff um, that shows I, I'm still with the times and not old. I'm relative OG. Um, I, I, I did, a little, uh, did a little upgrading recently with um, a processor by the name of AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. Uh, I did a Zen 3 brain transplant, and I realized that it re uh, would deliver some serious performance gains. I um, actually took the time to, I'm going to drop this link in the chat, uh, took the time to revamp a rig that we built a little over a year ago, August 2019 to be exact, with the good folks at Main Gear. So I went down to Main Gear's headquarters in New Jersey. Great people, great place. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen our coverage of main gear, but we've taken cameras in there and showed the process and how they build PCs like performance race cars. It's like the, you know, Porsche assembly line of, of gaming PCs, really high end boutique stuff. A lot of very passionate people there, you know, digging in and, you know, designing custom built PCs for, for gamers and workstation professionals as well. Just really great stuff. Um, you know, local small business that isn't so small anymore. 
And uh, so, yeah, we went down there, built a Ryzen 9 3900 X base platform, X570 chipset motherboard from Gigabyte, all kinds of great stuff like PCI Express 4 SSDs, um, just a beautiful config. And then, of course, main gears, uh, Apex liquid cooling system, which is this beautiful labyrinth of uh, acrylic uh, distribution block, liquid distribution block, hardline liquid tubing, um, Bits Power, I think, was one of the partners that designed the cooling system uh, with them or for them. They designed it, and then Bits Power made it, you know, produced it. Um, CPU cooling block, the whole thing, just beautiful custom job. Chris, I don't know if you can bring up my my rig, but um, it is actually my workstation rig. Um, that's the video right there. Um, we actually decided, okay, we got Ryzen 5000 series available now. Let's let's go ahead and take that 3900X and replace it with a 5950X. So 12 core Zen 2 to 16 core Zen 3. And man, I tell you, what a difference. I, you know, I, I threw a couple of benchmarks in there just because, you know, it's 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 fun to look at the performance lift. Um, Cinebench, you know, shot up like 50%. Um, you get a 19% IPC lift and then I don't know if it's what 30, 33% more cores. Uh, my Cinebench number went from 7,230 on a, um, 3,900X to 10, over 10,800 on the, uh, 16 core 5950X. But what, what impressed me the most is that it actually does this with slightly less power consumption under load and at idle. And I'm still tuned, playing with it. I want to get into the BIOS and play with some of the PBO offset settings um, because there's some additional performance to be had there. But I took the time to shoot it on video. Check it out. I'll drop a link to the uh, YouTube video in the chat as well. Um, it 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 was fun. Like I will say this: liquid cooling. Um, you know, when, when the first time you, you deal with a hard line set up and draining it and breaking it down, it's a little daunting. It's not like just unbolting an all in one liquid cooler and throwing some thermal paste and drop it back down. I had to drain the system and get some, you know, uh, new coolant to, to, to get in there. And, you know, there was a process. I had to disconnect some of the, the hard line tubing to get at the CPU socket, as you can see. But now that I've been through it just once, I'm a total pro, and I, I'm totally comfortable with changing out the the CPU and 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 actually providing annual maintenance. You should be draining and flushing a, a cooling system like this probably annually, just to to get some new fresh coolant in there and to keep the you know bacteria growth down or whatever. Um, so just really a, a great learning experience for me thoroughly enjoyed it i'll drop the youtube clip in the chat right there um absolutely thrilled with the ryzen 9 5950x performance i mean what a monster cpu it is and and to have it more power efficient and deliver that extra horsepower i can crunch videos whatever i do i do a ton of content creation as you might imagine we do um just loving it Love the machine. I literally look over at it and lust. There it is. It's next to me now. I'm so, it makes me so happy. <laughs> what do you think, Marco? And I'll stop yapping. Two things strike me about that article. One is how good a job AMD did making sure people can upgrade easily and get a massive performance boost. You know, that yeah. the, the AM4 upgrade path is pretty awesome. Upgrade your BIOS, pop in the new chip, done. You know, um, I think that's pretty awesome. And Showing folks that, hey, even with hardline tubing, if you just be careful, you can do it. <laughs> you know, don't yeah. break something. Be gentle with your fittings. And, you know, it's you don't have to destroy your destroy your rig to upgrade a component. So, yeah, good stuff. And, yes, yeah. gorgeous rig. I really you, I I was shopping cases last night after <laughs> that went up because, you know, I built this Threadripper rig a little over a year ago. Now we have that video up on the channel, too. And, you know, I'm such a stickler. I'm such an old fogey. I, I had been resisting going liquid cooling till this rig and I went with an all in one cooler and it's already freaking broken. Like it sounds like there's sand rolling around in it. I got a fan going bad. 
So like I'm like sick of this rig now. I want to do something else. <laughs> you know, when, once you go hardline liquid tubing and a distribution block like the way this thing has, it just it, it's really it looks like a complicated setup. But there's there's something to how how easy it is dialed in. How little it has to work to keep everything cool. Uh, I showed a. Um, I showed a, a a quick shot of me going into the fan curve and you when when we when we produce these videos you I send them to you 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 give me the sanity check to make sure I didn't screw something up and you know before we publish it's like proofing right obviously you have an edit check right so I actually you saw the screen where I dialed the fan curves way down to like sub 10% until it hits 80c till the CPU hits 80c because believe me when I tell you, it makes no difference at all if I have the pump and the fans <laughs> uh, up at 20% or 30% or anything higher than that and, and you know, under full load. It, it's just so quiet and it's like working so little. Now, caveat is I have the CPU. The, the CPU is in, in the loop only with two 240 millimeter radiators, top and front of the case. And so... There's a lot of thermal headroom there, obviously. I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to put a GPU block in there in the loop only because I'm, I'm pulling GPUs all the time. So I probably won't do that. But I think even if I did put a GPU block in the loop, it's, it's still going to be like, yeah, whatever. What else you got? You know? Well, I mean, you would be pumping 300 more watts into it, so it, it would definitely change it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would. But, you it know, would. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. Like, it, my machine needs to be practical and pretty, so I probably wouldn't water cool my GPU either, because that's the part that, you know, for every CPU upgrade, I probably change the GPU three times. You know, so I, I'd like yeah. to need that flexibility for the GPU. You know, I'm the same way. But we'll Chris, see what we're... happens. I, you know, I I, I have um. I know if I build myself another Threadripper rig where CES is going to roll around and we're going to hear about Threadripper 5000 series, so I should probably wait. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's, yeah, you know that's coming. I mean, Zen 3 is coming to Threadripper. It's just a matter of time. Chris, Chris, <laughs> okay. what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, as far as the upgrade process, I mean, you make it look very easy. I've still got the EK Fluid Gaming system here that has both the CPU and GPU um, on EK's liquid cooling system. Um, still, still thinking about doing a double swap there, um, just to see if it can be done. Um, you definitely do see a difference with the temperatures when both the CPU and GPU are engaged on the same loop because, you know, you're still, you're, you're just adding that much more heat to the system. So yeah, you will, you will notice a difference there. And I think a lot of people, when I reviewed the EK system, were concerned about the temperatures under my stress torture test scenario with Permark and prime 95 running at the same time but aren't you know you don't realize how much heat is there until you have them both on the same loop and yeah that's just how it's going to be you're going to have those higher temps um does it make it more difficult to swap your gpus yeah because unlike the cpu that's going to stay in the same place and especially with amd and you're using the same socket and literally nothing's changing in your positioning from chip to chip you know, your GPU, even if you're in the same family, is going to have a slightly different die position and it's it's going to take a bit more to line up and adjust. And there there is going to be more work involved with swapping that on a regular basis. So, um, you know, I want to I try this project and, and see how it goes for the GPU on that front. But um, it, I, th I think it was a very nice video you put together on, on your upgrade there. And main gears are beautiful. <laughs> We have lost your audio, Dave. Yep. Eh, there we go. It's back. There it is. <laughs> Sorry. I muted there because I actually coughed for a second. Didn't want to have that on. Anyways, yeah, no, you have to give it credit to Main Gear. I mean, we went down there. They they really helped us assemble this system, the Main Gear Vibe with Apex Liquid Cooling. But they designed the components of this chassis that that I'm working with right, right now in a DIY fashion. And... You know, that that technology is really what, um, you know, enable, enables this beautiful machine next to me. So great to, you know, have that and be able to work with it over the years like I have. And 
um, you know, they, they engineered this. So it's really something you can actually buy on Amazon, the vibe chassis, which is a, you know, it's a great chassis window chassis. It's nothing too exotic. Um, but the apex liquid cooling system is what, uh, what does the trick, what, uh, really keeps things nice and chilly and uh, quiet. So good stuff. And yeah, Ryzen 9 5950X, I am just thrilled to death with this chip. Um, wish they were more available. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think everybody's, you know, GPU, CPU, all the new stuff is just having a tough time with lack of availability. But hopefully we can get by that soon. Um, you know, on the CPU side, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, a GPU side, we talked about this last stream. It's It's substrates. It's actually the components that you mount the GPU die on that's causing the issue. Um, you know, uh, it's just uh, there's it, there's a lot of cogs in the in the wheels in the cogs and that um, you know get get product out to market. And unfortunately, uh, we have a perfect storm going on right now. So won't belabor that too much. Won't won't belabor the uh, the discussion about Nvidia and hardware unboxed. Um, just. We'll just move on, and we're hoping 2021 just gets a heck of a lot more positive, Dagnabbit. <laughs> oh, we're <around>. hoping. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, no joke, 2020 has been like a complete, you know, cluster. <laughs> you know what? In a lot of this, ways. If we're going to move on to the Galaxy X, X, uh, S20 Fan Edition, yes, we that's need the to. 2020 phone right there. That's the positivity we need. An there affordable flagship. Run it. But, you know, it, we got to convert <laughs> Ben switched from an iPhone to Android. Even better. Another positive aspect of this review. And the thing's affordable. You know, that's good stuff. That's positivity right there. <laughs> Thank you, Marco. Thank you so much. Yes, the Samsung <laughs> Galaxy S20 FE Fan Edition uh, brings serious, seriously big Android value. I'll drop the uh, link in the chat. And, uh, you know, just think Galaxy S20 you know, class hardware. So Snapdragon 865, um, 5G modem. Um, I think to get millimeter wave, uh, you may have to pay a little bit more on Verizon, um, but you've got, you know, uh, sub six, uh, 5G at least. So longer throw, a little bit less performance, 5G. Um, six gig of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, all the great camera mojo of your Galaxy S20. I'm trying to think. What does it have any limitations relative to camera? I didn't read too deep on that. Yeah, one lower resolution camera that only does the uh, zoom to 30x, which is it's obviously it's 30 plenty, is fine. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know, plastic uh, chassis on the, versus the glass, which I think is fine, especially if you're going to throw it in a case. You know, right, right. Four thousand milliamp hour battery, so battery life is solid, um, and then great Snapdragon 865 performance. Really, just. You know, if you're looking for what's it, what's it priced as six hundred bucks? So you can, there's like, well, Lots you can deals. get it as low as five hundred. That's it. Like it's all over the map from five hundred to like seven fifty, depending on the model. But considering it's you know Snapdragon eight sixty five <clears throat> and the kind of performance it offers, um, it's it's one of the better buys in phones. And you could see why Ben converted from Apple to this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundreds less than an iPhone of similar configuration. If you talk about a an iPhone 12 with 100, 128 gigs of RAM, oh, excuse yeah. me, storage. Um, <clears throat> yeah, six and a half inch full HD display, AMOLED, super uh, uh, Samsung's great super AMOLED technology. Is that really a 60 can't... hertz display or higher refresh rate? Uh, I think it's 120. Question. Yeah, I don't remember. Now I have to go look. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah what is what is let me look at that display that's a good question um 20 hertz yeah excellent yeah yeah i would think they wouldn't you know because you're, you're talking about the same galaxy s20 display um or you know and and form factor so yeah just really a a, a great phone for the money and uh samsung you know doing it right they, they you know they they saw the value in bringing more value you're, you're you're getting you know some of these brands like OnePlus kind of stealing the show on six hundred dollar handsets in spots, and so I think it was a bold move, good move, and uh, man, they hit a home run, right? So yeah, do you want a little negativity on Samsung, <laughs> or should we? Keep oh <laughs> no, no, you can bring it. You gotta get it. You gotta so say it's funny, it like, like it is, man. I, I've been. I, I went from 
I went from a Note 8, which treated me phenomenally, to the OnePlus 7T, which I had to get off, to the Note 10 that I'm on now. And it seems that Samsung has gone backwards in terms of software. My Note 10, for no apparent reason, don't drop it. It's immaculately clean. I haven't done anything funky. Um, the main camera decided it wants to it wanted to break and it has colored lines going through it. Ooh, and Bluetooth is super buggy. Like I have to clear the cache and data on the Bluetooth app and restart the phone like every week or so, or my buds don't work anymore. So the bit rot is real again with Android. Yeah. At, at least with the build on the Note 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I haven't seen that. Um I'm on a OnePlus phone. Uh, I have a OnePlus 8 Pro. Love it. Um, it's been a solid phone for me. Have some caveats here and there. Um, nothing crazy. N not the best with Wi-Fi connectivity, as, uh, you know, but that's, you know, frankly, could be just my environment that I deal with. Um, but, yeah, um, haven't seen a bit rod issue. Interesting. Uh, I, I, I think that one thing that's kept me off Samsung phones is is my dislike for their skin. A lot of folks like it now. One UI is way better uh, in the in the more recent versions. Um, or oh, is that what they call it? One UI, right? Do I have that yeah, right? Yeah, and there is a there is an update for the Note 10 rolling out now to people. I just haven't gotten it yet. Yeah, yeah, maybe check that out. But yeah, no, I mean Samsung does does a great job. There's one thing about Samsung from a hardware perspective. They really they 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 build a beautiful device. So if you're looking for something that's every bit as sexy as you know, Apple's bobble, uh, you know, Galaxy series, Galaxy S20 and the fan edition, we would say is a good option. All right. So, um, yeah, check that out from the illustrious Ben Funk, a quick one page, uh, quick hitter with some benchmarks. You can see where it lands, some camera samples. You can see what that does. And, uh, yeah, you can check it all out at hotharbor.com. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about some giveaways and more specifically what just went up today. And then we'll talk about, uh, what's going up tomorrow. Uh, we are, or we have announced the EVGA and hot hardware. Um, capture the holidays giveaway. And uh, it is, we are giving away an EVGA XR1 USB 3 captured device. Um, actually, six of them we're giving away for the next three weeks. So two a week for the next three weeks. Six lucky winners will be chosen. There it is right there. That is the XR1 USB 3 capture device. We're going to get this in, actually, and, and test it out. Chris, I think we're going to make you a guinea pig, and you're going to maybe run the cast through it. We'll see. Uh, what, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know about this particular cast being the place for it. More of a, a game stream, I think, would be a better measure for it, though I can obviously That's pipe right. my camera through it um, with the HDMI output. Um, I, I am very interested to get playing with it. I know, I, I think FedEx said it was supposed to deliver today. I came home and started the stream up, so I haven't had a chance to look for it in the house. Um, so I might have it here to start playing with it, but uh, definitely will uh, want to take it for a spin, see what it can do. Um, I did have a Elgato HD60S capture card recently that I had bought and actually returned because that was a 1080p 60 capture card, um, but it, you could only output 1080p 60. You know, so, so even though you're getting the same um, stream resolution with both your actual monitor is also limited to the 1080p 60 so now that i'm on a 1440p monitor at 144 hertz um that wasn't looking like such a good option so i did return that before EVJ even reached out to us um, but was still keeping my eye out for options so seeing that this one supposedly can let me do a pass through at 1440p and 120 hertz um with the mm. flick of a switch when i'm not streaming um, is very attractive. Obviously, it'll go to 1440p 60 hertz while you are streaming, um, which is a little bit of a bummer, but perfectly understandable. Uh, so very interested to see exactly what it can do and how it performs. I accidentally clicked the wrong <laughs> button there. We're still here. Um, uh, so, so I'll be sure to let you know my thoughts. Obviously, I'm not yeah. letting the fact that we're doing a giveaway have any bearing into that. Um, you're still going to get exactly what I think about it. 
Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. So yeah, the the EVGA XR1 share the world. They say if I'm just looking at their site right now, let me drop this into the chat as well. We're giving away six of these. They 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 look pretty. I mean, if you look at the specs oh, and really, how they're set up, really attractive yeah. looking. Um, it has a mixer built in, so if you want to mix your audio on it, you can. That's what the uh, let me get it here. That's what the red knob is on it. Um, yeah. So very interesting yeah. to see it. Yeah, yeah, share the world. They say for the game streamer, instantly capture and stream every moment, every win of your gameplay. For the working professional, uh, connect a camera, set up a web conference, meetings, lectures, seminars, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, you know, what's interesting is that this product for EVGA seems a little left of center, right? Their graphics cards, their, um, you know, power supplies, and all kinds of other uh, stuff that are PC centric. This is certainly PC centric, but but it's timely um, for really what we're dealing with, you know, these days and the work from home, produce from home, produce mm -hmm. yourself, produce yourself from home for work. You know, everybody's got to kind of up their game to be on these Zoom calls and all these, uh, you know, streaming sessions like we do, like breaking sticks. It's just what we do. But um, yeah, some folks don't have uh the tools and this is definitely a tool it's also the first one to be obs certified so open broadcaster certified from the obs project and i don't know i don't I know do, what you think about that i do stream with obs i don't know what that certification really means i haven't mm. looked into that yet um but hopefully that means that there's a uh, a little better guarantee of support though you know obs is gonna update over the years as I just actually installed an update for it today. Um, so we'll see if that certification really means anything other than we hope it works. But yeah, oh, I'm looking at better than not. Having yeah. It. Looking at the OBS website right now, actually, um, uh, it is uh, certified devices. So it's um, there you go. It, it, it tells you what what. Uh, is actually uh it's the only one that's currently certified yeah. open broadcast software devices have been certified to work with the release of o obs studio and it's an open standard open source um you work with it chris um broadcast platform so good stuff uh from the folks at evga they are giving them away so that y'all can experience them we'll experience them and tell you our thoughts in an un unbiased uh balanced review uh to to give you the ins and outs but hey we're gonna give them away too just to you know celebrate the holidays right marco wake up yeah i'm I'm here you guys were chatting <laughs> man i was in, i was enjoying the chat and I, I was gonna go run and grab a link for two on because he's chatting about his resto mod so i was gonna go drop that into the chat um but yeah no these so i have been experimenting with tons of uh capture devices because you know i'm just trying to dial in the quality of my stream and when i eventually move soon and get set up i want things to be right and that xr1 does have specs that like exceed anything else usb that i've seen so looking forward to, ch to checking them out you know i'm probably going to upgrade my setup with one soon as well there you go yeah we'll uh we'll see how it goes we'll see how uh how the baby runs before we give it away we'll let you know but uh, we do have a contest up now that i drop it in the chat did i drop the contest in Yep. Oh, the giveaway, not the contest. Yeah. Um, so that's in the chat. Uh, I just dropped. Oh, no, actually, you didn't drop the giveaway. You dropped the product page, but not the giveaway. Did I? Uh, yeah, you're right. I did. Okay. There's the, here you go. There's the giveaway page at Hot Hotter. We have a, we have a gleam going. You can follow, like, subscribe nine different ways from Sunday on lots of different social pages related to Hot Hardware and EVGA, of course. And it'll uh, get your entries in. Uh, 21 days left, uh, but the good news is we're giving two a week for the next three weeks away. So every week there will be a couple of winners. Everybody's a winner. There you go. And we might have someone from EVGA on the podcast and perhaps give something away live too. We'll see. We're, that that's being oh, worked. That's out. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to follow up on that. We might we might be doing giving two of those away live on the stream. So hey, there you go. Pay attention. You got to be. You got to be. Don't miss a show. Right. You got to be on. <laughs> you got to join us live. Dang it. We're doing it live. Um, you got to make sure to join us. <laughs> and then uh, we're also lining up something that will go live tomorrow. So concurrent, concurrent giveaways. 
We're going to be giving away a Ryzen uh, 9 5800X. Do I have the 9 or the 7? i got to look that up. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, a 5800X. <laughs> a we're giving one of those away. It is a 9. 5800X. And, uh, yeah, um, along with a cooler. No, it's a Ryzen 7 5800X. Ha, ha. You were wrong, Chris. I was wrong, it too. It happens sometimes. Sorry, I'm just getting used to all these numbers. Uh, 5800X, we're going to be giving one of those away along with a, an A data 360 millimeter AIO beefy liquid cooler and a bunch of peripherals from the good folks at A data and Asetech. Asetech, by the way, designed and manufactures, I think, A data um, private labels that cooler. That's coming tomorrow, right, Marco? Tell us more because I'm clearly floundering. <laughs> yeah, so uh, AMD Ryzen 7 5800X processor, XPG uh, Levant 360 all-in-one cooler, and uh, a data summoner keyboard, the Battleground Prime mouse pad, and the Prime mouse, all in one single prize pack. We are going to make it super easy. Like all of our contests, come by the site, check out a couple of social media channels like this, visit that, nice and easy. Bingo, bango, bongo. We'll let the gleam do its thing, and you can win. <laughs> Muted again, Dave man. is muted again. <laughs> I was, was missing, witty. No, I was I was missing the bongo. That's what it was. Dang it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I dropped the link in the chat. It is a Ryzen 7 5800X that will go with that. That is an eight-core processor boost to 4.7 gigahertz. 16 threads, don't you know? 4 meg of L2 cache, 32 meg of L3. It's one of the good ones. And uh, it's going to go with that... Uh, with that cooler and some peripherals and uh, stay tuned tomorrow. We'll have that up on the site. So uh, that'll be running for probably a couple weeks and there'll be a lucky winner that gets the whole, the whole kit and caboodle of delicious technology goodness. Yes. <laughs> All right. I think we've said enough for today. I've, I've screwed up enough, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, anything else to add before we depart? And uh, we'll be hopefully back on next week. It's going to be a little tight coming up to the Christmas holiday. Yeah, you know, just my usual. Um, we we cover a tiny fraction of the content that's up on hothardware.com. So if you're checking out this video and you like it, definitely go check out the main site, hothardware.com. If you're not already a subscriber, please like and subscribe and hit that reminder bell. We really want to build a channel this year. That's going to be a new year's resolution of ours for 2021 is to have a larger presence on YouTube, but yeah, you know, come check everything out, come chat with all the other like-minded geeks uh, in the community and have some fun. Right. Oh, well, you can find us in the web at hot hardware.com, twitter.com slash hot hardware, youtube.com slash hot hardware vids where you're hopefully watching us now hit thumbs up, subscribe, please reminder bell. Uh, so that you can be notified when we go live uh, or when we have new content, um, reviews, podcasts, um, circus tricks, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> and with that, we will bid you adieu, and thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs>